got a question here from the audience. It's about developing relationships with stakeholders. It's a big question for all of us, how we engage with those people yeah. and make partnerships and get lasting partnerships. What makes great designers is being able to see a problem from multiple vantage points. But I'll often go talk to a company who has a track record of success in a similar market space and that company usually has a good feel of new market opportunities. They may not have fully characterized like what's missing as far as their knowledge and technological capability to capture them, but they'll say like, hey, here's a half a billion consumers we'd love to sell to, but we can't. And so when you start having those conversations, you get those, I think, market perspectives. When you start working your way down the hierarchy of the company, you'll start understanding manufacturing challenges, distribution challenges, maybe subsidy challenges. And then you can go out and, and, and connect with the other organizations that are helping that, I guess, supply chain of technology from commercialization out to the field. So there may be an NGO doing outreach work or, or initial funding. And if you map out that, that whole network, you'll get a variety of these perspectives. And what you'll also collect is design requirements. There's a variety of people in the audience that are currently doing engineering for global development work. We have some new folks in the audience. Could you please describe kind of a little bit of your personal story about how you first got engaged? It was working for a business as a student in a class. You heard a talk about what motivated you and then how you actually took the first steps to do the work you are today. When I went to graduate school, I took a course in artificial intelligence my first semester and it really changed how I saw everything. And when I flew home for winter break, I flew over a wind farm and I noticed that the wind turbines were not laid out in a way that makes sense from an engineering perspective. I took this AI knowledge that I had just got through this course and started applying it to that problem. I met, well, become my PhD advisor, um, Dr. Mark Bryden, who actually helped to found this um, this uh, forum, the AGG forum here. And he invited me to participate in a senior design project with biomass cook stoves. And so I, you know, I thought, wow, that's really interesting. And I, I came out to Oregon for the summer to volunteer um, at a nonprofit doing some testing and, you know, bringing some more rigorous um, engineering design tools to, uh, to this nonprofit. The things that I was doing could actually then make it right into the field, into people's homes, and to change their lives. And so I just, I got caught up in this, you know, ability to actually have a real impact what opened my eyes was the technical opportunity in this space. These technical problems are actually harder than what I've faced before because they're so constrained. I saw that there was this opportunity to actually make a positive impact in the world, but really through my technical training. So I think it, the developing world appealed to me as an engineer just as much as the humanitarian aspects. What do you think the, the big areas are for EGD coming up? And what is this community and the community outside of those doors supposed to do about it? I think if you take one thing away from, from our responses here, it's figure out how to use your skills and use um, the engineering design knowledge that you're passionate about. All of the skills that we have as engineering designers are totally applicable in this space. And it's really developing that intuition, really looking into these different uh, emerging application areas and figuring out how you can play best in that space. I think co-design is a really interesting uh, area that's there hasn't been a lot of work in yet, but um, designing with people rather than designing for people. We have like enormous intellectual muscle in this building that has the skills and knowledge to solve development problems. They just don't know what problems to solve. So I think the biggest area for us to work on is articulating development pro problems in research terms. I think all of us here are really tuned in and figured out, here's how our skills apply to development, but I think our task in this room is to engage all the rest of the people around us to realize they have the skills and then get them working on really substantive problems.